thank you very much for inviting us to this important webinar, for giving us the opportunity to talk about the evolution of cognition warfare, the importance uh, of Ukraine for Canada and the new world order. So communication network, modern information technologies are used by the cognitive war to uh, persuasive uh, social media to create database and false and incorrect information. Um, Nikolai Gogol, that was an Ukrainian writer, uh, wrote, however stupid a fool's word may be, they are sometimes enough to confuse an intelligent man. In uh, 1957, uh, the Soviet Union uh, launched the uh, Sputnik, and with this, it was like a Pandora box with unthinkable possibilities. And one of these possibilities is uh, um, the professor, uh, uh, Nick Leider from Massachusetts Institute of Technology that brought the concept of galactic network that was um, uh, later on, four years later, um, the fathers of the internet, uh, uh, Surf and Khan, and then uh, Bob Taylor, they saw the possibility of transfer of small pieces of data across different networks. And that was uh, um, taken by the um, big North American universities like Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology, Stanford, uh, McGill, Harvard. But then also companies like Xerox that uh, brought the uh, Ethernet card that allowed the uh, IBM to put it in, the, in their computers to have this uh, a possibility of networking. Later on, the ATT company saw the possibility of commercializing the, the uh, internet. And then uh, the British um, uh, Bernard Lee uh, was the creator of the World Wide Web platform. And then in the 1990s, the, uh, the search engines uh, appeared, including in, in uh, Russia, in China, in uh, um, South Korea. Then the cyber attacks, the first cyber attack that took place was in 1999 between two countries, India and, uh, and Pakistan. And we have also uh, the first uh, internet censorship that took place in 1995. Um, then in, in 2000, the uh, social media uh, um, appeared, then uh, the hacking. According to the Cisco Annual Cybersecurity Report, uh, there are two types of company, those that have been hacked and those who they don't know yet that they have been hacked. Then we have the uh, cyber warfare, that is the use of digital attacks against an enemy state causing similar harms to the actual warfare. Uh, using the witness society from uh, within, uh, using this information, uh, influencing the beliefs and the values and the control and manipulate uh, the people. Um, this is the shift of uh, the battlefield from a conventional war to a narrative war. And this is very, very interesting. So we have this picture and we can manipulate this, this picture uh, 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 as, as we want. Um, this is uh, why, why Canada is uh, interested in Ukraine. This is a picture that I took in uh, uh, Saskatchewan. It looks like if I was in, in, in Ukraine. So the, the we have uh, um, a lot of similarities. In the province of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta, we have a very um, um, soil, a very good soil that uh, the first immigrants from Ukraine were farmers that came to work in this uh, land. Uh, then we have uh, several uh, waves. Uh, we have four waves of uh, immigration. So now, uh, presently in Canada, we have uh, one uh, million and three hundred thousand uh, um, um, people that are uh, um, from uh, Ukrainian origin. Uh, we have uh, uh, governor generals, for example, we have two governor generals that were from uh, the uh, 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 Ukrainian origin. We have uh, senators, we have even the deputy prime minister of Canada presently uh, is uh, Krista Freeland. If uh, for some reason uh, uh, prime minister uh, Trudeau has a problem and he cannot continue uh, in, in the power, um, the deputy prime minister will become the, uh, the prime minister of, uh, of Canada. Uh, and she speaks Ukrainian to, um, uh, at home with, with uh, uh, her kids. We have three uh, lieutenant governors representing the queen in the provinces. We have uh, uh, provincial premiers that are uh, Ukrainian origin in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Ontario. We have uh, majors. Uh, 
Uh, we have uh, even um, um, television personalities like Alec Trebek, uh, very famous in the United States. We have, uh, um, um, for Canada, it's very important, the, the hockey. And uh, we have, uh, this is just a, a short list of the Ukrainian uh, uh, origin um, uh, um, hockey players in Canada. Of course, the, the, the great one is Wayne Gretzky. We have uh, from five uh, astronauts that Canada has, uh, two, uh, they are from Ukrainian origin. We have even uh, uh, um, actors. Um, they, they, we need to remember that the diplomatic relations were established between Canada and Ukraine on December 2nd, 1991. And Canada was the first uh, Western nation to recognize Ukraine independence for, uh, from the USSR. We have a high level visit from governors, from prime ministers to, to Ukraine and from Ukraine to, to Canada. And at this point, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Robert to continue the, the presentation. This, Thank, you. Uh, Robert. Yes. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? And many thanks for the invitation to participate in this webinar. I will continue with the presentation of Dr. Jorge Vilches. Also, it is important to highlight the historical context and the origins of the Russia's conflict in Ukraine can be found in the recent history after World War II. Uh, then it, uh, a period known as the Cold War took place. In this period, the Soviet Union had a number of friendly countries on its border with Europe, and which at the same time served as a, as a security region. And this world order uh, resulted from the international conferences uh, at, at the end of the war, War II. The period saw the creation of, uh, of NATO in 1949 and its counterpart, the, the Warsaw Pact in 1955. The next, please. At the end of the, Cold, of the Cold War, with the disappearance of the USSR, the war order was reorganized and the end of the Cold War was a significant change in the world order. However, there was, there was a problem because it was not, there was not an agreement with clear rules for the new world order. Apparently, there was a non-verbal agreement and the US government uh, promised that NATO would not expand into Eastern Europe. Uh, however, nevertheless, NATO expansion took place since the 1990s, as we can see in this map. Uh, and there were some warnings before uh, from foreign policy expert, experts about NATO ex expansion. For example, the CIA director William J. Burns has warned about the provocative effect of NATO's expansion since 1995. And when the Clinton administration took steps to include Poland, Hungary, and Czech Republic in NATO, Burns uh, wrote that the decision was pre premature at best and unnecessarily provocative at worst. 1997, 50 foreign policy experts signed a letter to the Clinton administration saying that we believe that the current US-led effort to expand NATO is a political mistake of historical proportions that will disrupt European stability. Indeed, US diplomat George Kennan, the father of the Cold War containment doctrine, warned against NATO expansion in 1998. Uh, the next, please. Russia, indeed, Russia, Russian President Vladimir Putin in Germany uh, at the Munich Security Conference stated the following. The US tries to impose its rules and its will on other countries, but the unipolar model, uh, which continue after, after the Cold War, is impossible and totally unacceptable in the modern world. And NATO expansion has a provocative character and reduces the level of mutual trust. And Putin said that as a result of the actions of the US and its allies, no one feels safe because such policies stimulate the arms race. The next, please. John Marsheimer, uh, who is an international uh, relations uh, scholar, uh, for years, he has argued that the United States, by pushing NATO's expansion to the east and establishing uh, friendly relations with Ukraine, has increased the likelihood of war between nuclear armed powers and has laid the ground for uh, Putin's aggressive 
position toward Ukraine. In 2014, after Russia annexed Crimea, Merzheimer wrote that the United States and its European allies shared most of the responsibility for this crisis. The next, please. Since uh, the, uh, 2004, when the former Soviet republics of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania joined, joined NATO and the European Union, the Russian government made it clear that it would uh, oppose any integration efforts by the remaining post-Soviet states, and this became a red line. According to uh, a professor of international relations, Stephen, Stephen Walt, the Russia-Ukraine war illustrates a classic realist concept, the security dilemma. This dilemma are, uh, arises because the steps one state takes to make itself more secure, it often makes other less so. Uh, one is the state uh, A feels insecure and uh, seeks an ally or buys more weapons. And then uh, accordingly, state B is alarmed by this step uh, and responds in kind. Both countries end, end up poorer and less secure than before. From, this, from the perspective of international relations, states that border other more powerful ones must take into account the interest of the stronger neighbor uh, one uh, example, one, one of these examples uh, took place in the Cuban Missile Crisis, Missile Crisis of 1962. During this crisis, leaders of the US and the Soviet Union engaged in a tense uh, in a, in a political and military standoff in October 1962. Finally, uh, stages in the international order, we could ask, is the Russia-Ukraine conflict the beginning of a new world order? Recently, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi met in Tunxi, China on March 30, 2022. They declare they are moving toward creating a new, just more democratic world order. Thank you very much for uh, your attention. Uh, Finally, uh, this is uh, a phrase of Father Dostoevsky. Taking a new step, uttering a new word is what people fear most. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.